In this video, I will break down the commonly used option trading strategy, butterfly spreads. Butterfly spreads are a very interesting strategy and they can be very profitable. First of all, let's start with the basics. A butterfly spread consists of different options on the same underlying asset and with the same expiration date, but with different strike prices. There are two different butterfly spreads. You can either trade short butterfly spreads or long butterfly spreads. One main difference being that short butterfly spreads are open for a credit and long butterfly spreads are open for a debit. In other words, you get paid to open a short butterfly spread and you have to pay to open a long butterfly spread. Let us move on to the setup and payoff of butterfly spreads. A short butterfly spread is a price indifferent strategy and a long butterfly spread is a range bound strategy. I will pre present this difference more thoroughly later in this video. This is how the payoff diagrams of the two different spreads look like. As you can see, a long butterfly spread is more or less just an inverted version of the short butterfly spread. The orange line shows the payoff profile on the expiration date, whereas the blue line shows the, shows the payoff sometime before that. You should focus on the orange line as it's more significant. The setup of butterfly spreads is, re is relatively simple. But before I present that, I have to say that there are two different butterfly variations for both short and long butterfly spreads. They are both put and call butterfly spreads. There are only very few minor differences between these. All options are puts for put butterflies and all options are calls for call butterflies. To set up a short put butterfly, you will need to sell one in the money put, buy two at the money put and sell one out of the money put. If you exchange all the puts with calls, you'll have a short call butterfly. To understand the setup better, look at the crosses on the payoff diagram. The red crosses symbolize short options and the green crosses represent long, the long options. The setup of a long butterfly spread is an inverted version of the short butterfly setup. Instead of selling one in the money and one out of the money put, you'll need to buy these and sell the two at the money puts. The same goes for a long call butterfly spread. Once again, the crosses symbolize the different options. Now that we have the setup covered, I will present you the profit and loss of butterfly spreads. On the payoff diagram of the short butterfly spread, you can recognize that the price of the underlying asset has to move beyond one of the strikes of the short options to achieve max profit. If the price does not move enough, a loss will occur. Max loss will only occur if the price of the underlying is exactly on the strike price of the long options. This is the other way around for long butterfly spreads. Here, a profit will be achieved if the price does not move a lot and max profit will be achieved if the price is exactly at the short strikes on expiration. If the underlying price moves further than one of the long strikes, max loss will occur. Butterfly spreads are a defined risk and a defined profit strategy, meaning that you can't lose or win more than a certain amount. To understand what influences the price of butterflies, I will present how you can calculate your max profit max loss and break even points. Don't worry if you find this complicated, you will usually never have to do this yourself as every good broker should display these figures in their broker platform. The first calculation is very easy. To find out the max profit of short butterflies, you only have to look at the net premium taken in and subtract commissions from that. The result of that calculation is also the max loss of a long butterfly spread with the exact same setup. The only difference is that you have to add commissions instead of subtracting them. 
The next calculation is more complicated. You have to find out the width of the strikes on one side, multiply that by 100 and add or subtract commissions from that. To find the max loss of short butterflies, you will have to add commissions and to find max profit for long butterflies, you will have to subtract the commissions. I will present these calculations with two example butterflies so that you can understand them much better. But I will disregard commissions in that example as they really don't help with understanding. The strikes for the short and long example butterfly spread are 95, 100 and 105. The premium paid or taken in is $72, but note that option prices are quoted in quantities of 1 even though the standard quantity is 100. Therefore, I write $0.72 when I mean $72. The first calculation is quite straightforward. Max profit for our short butterfly spread is $72 and this is also the max loss for the long butterfly spread. For the next calculation, we will have to find the width of the strikes first. The difference between the add the money strikes and one of the outro options is 5. So the width of the strikes is 5 for both spreads. Now we have to multiply 5 by 100 and so subtract the result with the premium, so $72. The result is $428, and that's also the max loss for the short butterfly spread and the max profit for the long butterfly spread. Now the only relevant points left to find out are the break-even points. To find these out, you will have to subtract the credit or debit from the upper option and add the credit or debit to the lower strike. The break-even points for our spreads are $104.28 and $95.72. Next up is the market assumption of these spreads. I already touched the, on this earlier. Both spreads are neutral strategies, but they are different kind of neutral strategies. Short butterfly spreads are price indifferent strategies, meaning that it does not matter in which direction the price moves as long as it moves. Long butterfly spreads, on the other hand, are range bound strategies. This means that the price ideally should stay in a certain price range. But as this range usually is very narrow, long butterflies are a rather low probability strategy and short butterflies are a rather high probability option strategy. Let's take a closer look at the payoff diagram once again. Short butterfly spreads are profitable as long as the underlying price moves far enough. This means that the entire price range beyond one of the short strikes is profitable. This is actually quite a big profitable range, but this is also the case for long iron condors even though these usually are a much lower probability strategy. The reason for that is that short butterfly spreads normally are quite narrow, so the price only has to move a few points for the spread to become profitable. Furthermore, max loss is very unlikely for short butterfly spreads because the price of the underlying asset has to be exactly at the strike price of the long options. All of this is the other way around for the long butterfly spread. The underlying price may only move very little for this strategy to be profitable. Max profit is also quite unprobable. Thus, the profitable range tends to be very relatively small for long butterfly spreads. One of the last things that I want to present to you in this video are the Greeks. The Greeks measured changes in the options price for different scenarios. Short butterfly spreads react different to specific scenarios than long butterfly spreads. I always use this table in my videos. It shows the impact of the different Greeks on different option positions. The long options are the most valuable and thus most dominant options for short butterfly spreads. 
And that's also the reason why the Greeks for the long options are the relevant ones for short butterfly spreads. You could argue that short butterfly sp spreads should be called long butterfly spreads, but that's a different topic. As the short options are the dominant ones for long butterfly spreads, they are the ones to look at for long butterfly spreads. Before I begin to explain the impact of every Greek more thoroughly, I just want to say that you can disregard Rho for now, as it really isn't that important for shorter term option spreads. Let's start with Delta. Delta measures the change in the options price for a $1 move up in the underlying. But as butterfly spreads are neutral strategies, there's both a plus and a minus. This means that delta often is just around zero. Vega measures the change in the options price for a rise in implied volatility. So a plus for short butterfly spreads means that they profit from a rise in implied volatility, hence they should be entered in low IV environments. To find out how high implied volatility currently is, you should use IV rank. IV rank compares the current IV of an asset to the state of IV in past times. An IV rank of over 50 represents times of high IV and below 50 is a low IV environment. Logically, you should thus enter short butterfly spreads when IV rank is under 50. As Vega is negative for long butterfly spreads, all of this is the other way around, meaning that long butterfly spreads profit from a drop in implied volatility. Therefore, they should be entered in times of high implied volatility, so IV rank over 50. The next Greek is theta, and it is very important. It measures the change in the options price for time passing by. A plus means that the position gains some value every single day. The amount that an option loses or gains increases the closer the option is to expiration. Therefore, time is the worst enemy for sh of short butterfly spreads as the underlying price has less and less time to move outside of the losing range. This is yet again the other way around for long butterfly spreads, as the price already is in the profitable range right after the entry. Last but not least comes Gamma. Gamma measures the rate of change of delta for every $1 move up in the underlying. A plus means delta increases for each move leading to a rapid increase in the options price, a minus symbolizes that delta decreases for every $1 move. To make it simple, a plus is usually better than a minus. Gamma also increases the closer an option is to exploration. Note that all of these Greeks change with the change of these different factors. The just presented states are only correct if the price is near where it was when opening the spread. If you want to learn a little more about option pricing and the Greeks, I suggest checking out my video on it. I will leave a link in the description below. Now I want to present two example butterfly spreads on two different assets. The first example is a short put butterfly spread on the very liquid ETF SPY. Back then SPY was trading at around $250. The short strikes of that short put butterfly were 248 and 252. That's a spread of $4 and the underlying price was just in the middle of these. That means that already a $3 move in either direction before expiration would lead to max profit. A move like th that is quite likely. That is also why it happened. The two blue lines on the chart show the short strikes everything beyond those lines is max profit. The not profitable range is quite small and this really shows the high probability aspect of butterfly spreads. SPY's price moves out of this range within no time. The next and last example 
is a long cold butterfly spread. The underlying asset is DIA and it was trading at circa $212.5. The long strikes were $211.5 and $215.5 and are shown by the two lines. The range between those lines roughly indicate the profitable range. As you can see, that range is relatively small and the underlying price only stays in that range for quite a limited time. Before we finish, I want to present some tips and a brief recap on both strategies. First of all, I want to say short butterfly spreads are in my opinion a good strategy, especially due to the high probability aspect. Most other high probability option strategies are range bound strategies and short butterfly spreads aren't. I find that quite interesting. When setting up butterfly spreads, I recommend not picking strikes that are either too far or too little out of the money as this can impact the probability of profit or the credit taken in negatively. Furthermore, you should always take in a credit when opening this strategy. This credit shouldn't be too small as it otherwise isn't worth your time. I have $40 as a minimum credit as a rule of thumb. It is often a good idea to take profit early instead of waiting and holding all the way to expiration. But don't take profits too early. Ideally, you should enter this strategy in times of low IV. So use IV rank to your help. Finally, the probability of max loss is very low and this makes this strategy even better. Long butterfly spreads can be a good strategy as well. They are one of many range bound strategies and I normally like these kind of strategies as they often have a high probability of success. But sadly this isn't really the case for long butterfly spreads. I find them too narrow for me and I prefer short credit spreads or short strangles over this strategy. But you can increase the probability of profit by making the spread wider. Optimally, you should enter this strategy in times of high IV, so you can profit from a drop in it. Just like max loss was unlikely for short butterflies, max profit is also unlikely for long butterfly spreads. Obviously, this is a bad thing, and that's yet another reason why I don't trade long butterfly spreads. If you want to learn more about butterfly spreads, other strategies or just trading in general, you should definitely check out my website tradeoptionswithme.com. I offer 100% free educational courses with video lessons, thorough articles and quizzes to test your knowledge. Otherwise, I really want to thank you for watching this video.